Let's get over to our man, Mr. Tim Orders. We do every Tuesday and Thursday. And don't forget, folks, you can reach Tim every trading day at Ord, O R D, hyphen Oracle.com. That's Ord, hyphen Oracle.com. Tim Ord, what's going on? Well, geez, I mean, it's. There's really just nothing bearish here. The gold market looks good. The equity market looks good. Yeah, it was um, quite a run yesterday, we, man. No doubt. That's yeah, yeah. Uh, we which one do you want to cover? The equity or the gold or the equity? Place? Wherever you want to go, man. We're we're all set to go. And I haven't talked to you for a while, so I've been listening to you when I'm not here. There's no doubt about that. Um, okay. You know, so I, I get I get you know we're still on the same deal, which is pretty cool. Um, yep. Did let me ask you this? Did uh, I know we were we were looking at the you know the Buzzy uh, Swartz deal that never came in, right? Um, well, it actually, it, it it went to point four to point six. It was supposed to happen in ten days. It did it in twelve days. Okay. So, Interesting. So it's triggered, but not as you know, you know the the the, the one previous to that. Went from point six or point four to point six in five days, coming off that low we had in uh, uh, what uh, uh, April, off that April low. Okay, that is wag breath said yep. that kicked in in five days, and the last one we had uh, it took uh, twelve days. So oh, interesting. Um, yeah, still bullish. I mean, it's not bearish yep. at all. But it's the, you know what's cool about that? It's coming off the low. And what's so. cool about that, Tim, is that we we now we understand. And what happens here, folks, now you have more information because what we don't know yet, which we'll find out, is that, you know, if it does come in in five days, we know from, you know, <laughs> the last time it came in, <laughs> the market went topside and marched away. So we'll see how this works. That's kind of cool, man, understanding that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Well, actually, there, there's actually kind of a three different. You know, there's this wag breath thrust indicator. Okay. That kicks in, uh, you know, ten days or less. Yes. So that's two weeks. Then there's another indicator that's kind of still the same, a, a breath thrust indicator type thing, and it's that's a, it's a McCollin oscillator, and that goes from minus three hundred to plus three hundred in thirty days. Okay. And there's an, and there's another one, a longer term one, that we actually got triggered last uh, December 27th. Yes, and that was the summation index, not right. the oscillator, but the summation index, which is a little bit still a Vance Klein type indicator, but on a bigger time frame. And that goes from a minus 700 to plus 1,000, and that should happen in in uh, two months. And uh, that one did trigger, so that one predicts a a, a year out. Which is huge, right, yeah, yeah. which is awesome. No, and, they, and that's where we're at, yeah. folks, okay, which is really cool. I mean, because I remember when that was coming in. I mean, and yeah, it's a longer-term indicator, but when you have patience, longer-term indicators are, you know, strong. I mean, that's that's the bottom yeah. line. Yeah, yeah, pretty so, cool. So, yeah, that opened the door for, you know, the summation deck, which triggered uh, December 27th. Yes. That kind of opened the door for the next year. You know, sometimes it can go a couple years. But anyhow, that's is like chances are the next twelve months is going to be up, and so far that's playing out pretty well. So yeah, it certainly um, is. Uh, we, we can start looking at the chart, see where we are. I'm right ready. Now, which one? Want. Which one you want to go to? Let's just go to chart one. Okay, I have it up. All right, uh, the chart one. You know, the bottom window is the VIX, and in general, this is kind of you know if, if if the market's going up, the VIX is going up. That's going to spell trouble. But if when the VIX stays below 17, normally the market is kind of in trending mode. Yeah. And I shaded in uh, light pink the areas that we've been below 17. And we've been below 17 since last October. And we did have a down month in April. Uh, the, the VIX really didn't, you know, this is a monthly chart. Yeah. So it looks at the bigger time frames. And it really didn't respond. So that kind of meant that. There could be a pullback here, but nothing, but but nothing significant. And it did pull back, you know. And now we're back up, making new highs. And, but so far, the month's not over yet. But as long as the second window up from the bottom is the monthly S SPY VIX ratio, as long as that makes higher highs, as the SP is making higher highs, that's bullish for the uh, intermediate term. I so see. That's what we're having here. Yep. The last time. Uh, we we uh, was back in July of last year. The uh, the 
SPX VIX ratio, which is I noted in light green, we kind of went sideways, and that ratio was going higher, so that was kind of a warning. And the time before that was 2021 in October, November time frame. That ratio kind of went made lower highs, and the SPX was making higher highs, and that was a big decline. But we don't have anything like that right now. So on a bigger time frame, not every week is going to be an up week, but uh, – it looks good right now. There, there's, you know, I guess smooth sailing for a little bit. And also, I wanted to point out, you know, I did a Fibonacci relationship here going back to 2020. You know, the COVID crash back in March 2020. Yes. And I took that low and went up to the 2000, uh, late 2020 or early 2022 high, and did a retracement. We didn't quite do 50 percent retracement. But a lot of times that's the halfway point of the next move up. If you do that, if you do those calculations, you come out around 600 or close to it. Uh, if this is an a gigantic ABC up, and if that turns out to be true, that gives a target around 600, which is about 15 percent higher than where we are right now. Yeah, so, we're at 529.82. Uh, so this is it's him. So, so Tim, can, can we when we come back? I just want to really understand. Oh, I can do it right now. We'll get a second. So the monthly SPY, is it the SPY divided by the VIX ratio to get the uh, ratio? Well, this is the SPY slash VIX ratio. SPY divided by the VIX, right. Okay. Stay right there. Tim and I come right back. Welcome back. Tim Wood, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate you rattling a problem with us out here. We have the Dow Industrials right now, 42. NASDAQ is down uh, 12. S&Ps are off two. We are talking markets. And uh, so my question was, Tim, is that so when you, when you get that the SPY VIX ratio, right? So you take the SPY and divide it by the VIX. Is that how that works? Yep. Yes. Cool, right. man. Divide by the VIX. Okay, great. And and so, uh, if that, so if the SPY is making higher highs and that, SP, SPY VIX ratio is not making higher highs. That's the divergence. That's the sign you got. I see you gotta, it. No, and I can picture out. it because that would make sense. The SPY goes higher, the VIX goes lower. So that means that that people think there's going to be more buy-in. You divide that, and that's always going to be a higher number. Cool, man. Okay. And then the 50% retracement that we're talking about here, that's pretty cool because that was quite a run. You know, and this is, we're talking about the top chart now, folks. Okay. Because that was quite a run to have that it even didn't do a 50% retracement. I mean, it almost did, but that's a, that's a strong market in itself, right? Yeah, it's a strong, yeah. you know, it couldn't even get down to 50% retracement. Right, right. And, and so, you know, if you do the ABC stuff, Yes. You know, this thing uh, could, uh, and it's kind of, you know, playing out to deal. I, I, I want to point out another thing on this chart that works pretty well. And it's low tech, which is, works for me. Yeah. But anyhow, I got some circles on the red circles on the uh, SPY chart, on the monthly chart. I see that on the way up and then at the very top. Yes. Yeah. So I, I circled uh, the times when 50% of the trading range closes above the mid Bollinger Band. I and see. And whenever time that happens, usually next month is a down month. And we had that in uh, let's see April's down. So we had that in March. If you look at the yes, March we did this year. Yep. Yeah. And, and, and you nailed that. That, that was awesome. Your yeah. Show. I'm thinking, you know, April's probably not going to be up. Right. And right. And uh, and and so it did. <laughs> I kind of I didn't trade it the best, but anyhow, I, I did have that warning for now. But, you know, now we're breaking new highs, so everything kind of looks pretty good. So Yeah. That's just, let's flip to chart three. Okay. I have it. And, uh, th yeah, this is kind of a better, this is a weekly chart. So I always kind of look at the monthly chart to see where we are. You know, if if if, if, if danger is going to show up, it's going to show up on the monthly chart. So then I look at the weekly chart, see what's going on. And kind of a similar situation on, I, I got a two circles on that chart. Uh, the middle chart is yes. the uh, weekly SPYs, and kind of the same thing happens. If the market gets too exuberant to the upside or downside, a lot of times you get a close above the mid Bollinger Band, especially if you get a 50% above the mid Bollinger Band or downside mid Bollinger Band. Usually, the market is going to reverse. And I want to point out those two times. It works pretty well on the weekly chart, and even you know going back. Uh, 
of oh, December of 2023. It's, I didn't circle them there, but you kind of got above the upper Bollinger Band there, if you can see. Yes, it. I see it. Uh, you know, uh, yeah, late 2023. I probably should have circled it, but even that, you know, just a little bit above the mid Bollinger or upper Bollinger Band, the market kind of just stalls a little bit. And the point I'm trying to make here, we're not even close to a, a Bollinger Band here. We're still below uh, the upper Bollinger Band. So we can probably rally at least to it, if you know, and hug it. And as long as we stay on it or below, we'll probably be fine. Uh, that is so uh, cool. Right. Now, and that's and, and what Tim is explaining here, folks, is, 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 which is cool. And Tim knows it, it, it. Plenty of listeners know it out there, too. When you hug that line, as Bollinger, I remember when he was on, uh, and I remember, you know, this is so long ago, Tim, we had him on, uh, and you were on with me then, I think, because remember we had the three of us where we were trading, you were, we used to have five people on the phone sometimes, and um, he was talking, we were talking about Yahoo, and Yahoo hugged that line all the way up for like a year and a half, man, and then blew up, okay, but the, hugging that line's a big deal. Right, wow. Yeah, yeah, I remember him saying that, too, yeah. but, uh, you know, it, it's right, you know, you don't want to go really go above it, because that'll stall the market. But if you can just remain right below it, yep. and uh, uh, that's good because if you go up too fast, uh, you're going to come back. And yes. That's, that's, uh, momentum is a, really plays a, a big, important part of the market. If it goes up too fast, goes down too fast, uh, you're going to have reversals. But if it just creeps up day after day, that, that's the ones that can really just keep on going. Yeah. But I wanted to show you on the, on the, uh, uh, the second window up from the bottom is the weekly SPY, uh, SPY VIX ratio. Right. And you can see it a little bit better there. You can see the S&P's yes. making higher highs. I noted that in light green. And that ratio, SPX, or SPY VIX ratio, is also making higher highs. And that's exactly what's supposed to happen for this trend to continue higher. So, yeah. uh, anyhow, it looks good. It, it does look it's good. It's not going up too fast. Uh, it's, you know, nothing really worrisome here. Uh, so anyhow, I wanted to point that out. Let's get to the gold market. Okay. This, this is this is starting to be fun, and actually, everything's starting to, to work out pretty well. Look at uh, this chart, chart folks! Chart, you got to see this yeah. chart. This chart's amazing. <laughs> yeah, it, it, it really. Uh, you did a lot of work, man. Chart. Thank thank you for all this work, so, Tim. This is a lot of work on this. Wow. Okay. Cool. I'm ready. All right. So anyhow, this is a monthly chart. And we've kind of been looking at it for the last, I don't know, several weeks. And, you know, this is a chart that's got to kick in yep. to really get everything going to the upside. And what it is, you know, the top window is just the monthly um, uh, GDX. Yes. And I got pointed out there, circled in blue, is you should see a sign of strength. That's SOS. And I think that's a neckline. And, uh, and I'm thinking we're having the sign of strength right now because this is on a monthly chart and we're having sign of strength through that neckline but anyhow um, it's still developing we're still doing it but next window down is a monthly uh, gdf gle ratio and it's a little bit whippy so i don't i use it with other indicators to really kind of smooth things out but ideally you like to see that indicator the uh, monthly gdf gle ratio above the mid bollinger band if you go away to the right i have a window there yes and i got circled in blue where we are right now and that bollinger band has turned up and we're pretty much on the bollinger band to me if we can hold here or move higher because the month's not over yet this yes. is a monthly chart we've got two weeks to go uh that would signal a uh, bullish signal the next window down is the monthly uh, GDX advanced decline, and it has to get above its mid Bollinger Band. Okay, it has is way above it right now, and so that most likely is going to be triggered by month end. And the bottom window is the monthly up down volume. Same thing happens there. It's above the mid Bollinger Band right now. So all three of them, if we close right here on month end, that will suggest. At a minimum, we'll go up for the next year and a half. Get and, ready to uh, party, so it's folks. A, it's a big signal. <laughs> it's a big signal. Well, we, we won't jump the gun, but we are excited, Tim. There's no doubt about that. Stay right there, folks. Tim and I are coming right back. We have the Dow Industrials right now uh, trading up 22. NASDAQ's down 23. S&Ps are off 6.5. Tim and I are coming right back, folks.
Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Moore, Tom O'Brien. We do appreciate your growl and a problem with us out here. We have the Dow right now uh, up seven, Nasdaq's down 30, S&Ps are up seven and a half. And um, we started talking futures, folks, okay? Uh, that last bar did have volume, so uh, this baby wants to uh, you know, go into a slightly lower price as we uh, come into the close here. Tim, we get a call that uh, we're going to uh, go out to beautiful Montana uh, and uh, okay. see what our man Bill has to say. Bill, what's going on? Not much. Hey, hey Tim, fabulous work. Love it. Um, I have two general questions for you. First, do you apply okay. your all of your analysis to platinum and palladium, and if so, what does that show? And secondly, do you apply it to Newmont and Barrick as the key components of G GDX? And if so, do you ever get any leads or lags from them? Thank you. Uh, actually, I, I don't really cover Newmont or, um, you know, I look at it, but I, I kind of focus on pretty much GDX, because that's uh, that's the whole combined market. So I really don't break down anything. You know, so I really, obviously, if GDX is on a buy signal, uh, then Newmont obviously will be a bullish situation. But uh, I don't have that chart right in front of me or, or either one. But uh, and far as the metals go, I haven't, you know, I'm, I'm kind of looking at gold and silver. And uh, that remains bullish, but I haven't really looked at other metals, so yeah. Really can't and help you, you know, uh, Bill, if the I mean, plat platinum's on the run right now. So, I mean, do you own platinum? Are you looking to buy it or the PPLT? Or the oh, he hung up, I guess. So, you know, it's interesting because what has happened, Tim's uh, platinum's been a dog, but it just went from. Uh, 897 to 1062 in like 15 trading days. <laughs> so, wow. Yeah, yeah it's it's starting. I'm, to I'm thinking all the I'm thinking all the metals are going to kind of go here. I'm and with they, you, right? And and it, is it? No, no. Go ahead. But but anyhow, I'm thinking you know what's it's just you know the metals over the last several years has just been terrible. You know, and yes, I, I think everything going in cycles here. And so I'm thinking, uh, and maybe not this year, but I think the equity market is probably going to slow down because of the interest rates. I mean, this is not technical analysis I'm doing here. This is kind of opinionated. And metals have been, you know, in the doldrums for a long time. Yes. You know, you get a, a couple of months rally, and they come back at you. So, it's, so I'm thinking this is a time that's probably setting up where you and I got acquainted back in the 90s where this right. was gold market went through the ceiling i'm thinking that cycle you know is starting to recycle again and i'm thinking we're coming because we got some long-term signals here that are triggered that uh, uh you know are multi-year triggers uh, so right I'm, I'm thinking so all the metals are probably going to move together in my opinion yeah so and I, and folks that that's that's how they normally move and as tim is speaking this so what happens is that the when you have these lengths that everything's in the doghouse, and I'm not talking about um, stocks, because what happens, some stocks will be staying in the doghouse forever. What happens with metals, they're cyclical, period. I mean, that's, that's yeah. what, what, you, what you absolutely should do, too, if you're in the gold or silver market, is understand that so in a year and a half from now, you'll sell them. Because I had way too many folks not sell them <laughs> in 2011, you know, and... And I understand it because you think that it's going to go higher and higher and higher. Well, you know, everything is only so high and so low, basically. Do you know what I mean? But, yeah. Yep. Yeah, I totally okay. agree with you. Okay, so. so let's see. So we're on chart number three, Tim. Okay. Chart, well, chart number four, actually. Four. I'll go to four. One, oh, no, I'm in four. Yes, I'm on four. Okay, cool. All right, so four. So anyhow, so now you want to see, are, are this, we got two weeks to go before the month close out. Yes. Are these... Um, uh, momentum type indicators are going to stay above their mid Bollinger band. So I'll answer that question on chart five. Okay, I'm ready. So chart five. Yep. Now you got the same indicators. The bottom window is, is not a cumulative. It's an 18 day average. So that's a what three three week yeah 15 days. So that's about three week moving average. Yes. Uh, of the up down volume, which is the bottom window. Next higher window is the 18D average, and anyhow, the blue 
when these indicators are above minus 10, both of them, the bottom two windows, or the bottom two uh, indicators, which are the bottom two windows, are above minus 10, which is the, the actually light green area, the market is an uptrend. When they're below minus 10, the market is in a downtrend. Yes. And actually, you get divergences, too. If you notice, we got above the minus 10 on both indicators, basically, round off, I don't know, March 1st or end of February. Yeah, let's call it March 1st. Right. And so and we've been above minus 10 since then. And if you notice right now, this indicator is actually getting stronger. It is. Because we're actually hitting higher highs as as over the last couple of weeks. And also, the uh, Yeah, like we're, we're at plus 20. Highs. So... What that means is we're not even near minus 10. We're actually gaining strength here. And you're gaining strength exactly where you're supposed to be. Let's go back to chart four. Okay. And top window. Yep. That's a, that's a head and shoulders bottom. And I drew that blue line there. Yes. That's the neckline of a head and shoulders bottom. And to get through the neckline, you have to have a sign of strength to confirm it's Weisskopf. You have right. to have a, a sign of strength through a trend line to have a valid break to the upside. And that's the reason why I have that SOS there. Yes. That's the neckline. So exactly, if you go back to chart five, that's exactly what we're doing. We're gaining strength right through that neckline, which is around 34. I don't have it drawn on this okay. chart. Okay, that's cool to know. It's, yep. it, yeah, it's... it's, 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 it's and uh, right now, folks, we're at 35, right so, 64. It's, it's right. Look, Okay, well, another chart, a little bit bigger time frame. Let's go to chart six real quick. Yeah, hey, we busted that neckline really nice. I see what you're saying, man. Okay, cool. Okay. Yeah, so now you can kind of see. Now, now the bottom window is a 50-day average, so that's like two and a half months. Yes. So this indicator works similar. It has to be above zero. As long as above zero... Uh, you're in an uptrend, so it looks at the bigger picture. So we're actually gaining strength there too. We're also all, almost close to the uh, the highs here of our, you know close to 20. Where we're at, I can't quite read. It looks like about 15 or 14 or so. But we're gaining strength going through that neckline. There you can see the the head and shoulders bottom we're talking about. And this head and shoulders bottom has a if you do the measurements, you have an upside target around 50. So we're at, you know, 35, 36. It's a big number. Area. Yep. So we're, we're not backing away. Chances are we're going to be staying up, if not going higher, over the next two weeks, according to these shorter-term charts. So if you flip back to chart number four. Okay, I have it. That's that monthly chart again. So we're, we're wondering if these charts are going to hold and go above and hold above the mid-Bollinger bands. Well, according to... The short-term charts, we will. That is some nice analysis. If you, if you get, wow. if you, yeah, if you get my analysis, what's going on here. Oh, so. we get it. We get it. You stay right there, and we're going to do chart six as soon as we come back, folks. We have the Dow Industrials right, right now uh, trading. Uh, where are you, baby? Up 35. NASDAQ is uh, down 25. S&Ps are off 5. Tim and I are coming right back, folks. And don't forget, you can get hold of Tim at ord, O-R-D hyphen oracle.com. Coming right back. Welcome back, folks. Uh, Tim Wood, Tom O'Brien. We have the Dow 56, NASDAQ's down 17, S&Ps are off one and a half. And I have uh, number six up, Tim. Yeah, six. Okay. You know, this is um, the bottom window is a 50-day average of the up-down volume. Next higher window is a 50-day average of the advanced decline. Okay. And uh, I worked a lot of different, you know, tried to figure out. Anyhow, this one, if it's... If, if the if the GDX just keeps uh, going up and these indicators are actually starting to go down, you get a negative divergence. But that's not happening here. The, both of these indicators, uh, the, the, uh, the bottom window, or yeah, the bottom window and the next window up, are staying above, you know, the plus fifteen, plus twenty area. Yes. So I'm I'm thinking as we're watching GDX here, you know. It's not going to back off. These two indicators are too high above the zero line. If they were trending down, I would say, yeah, we're going to back off on the GDX. But they're not doing that. So I'm saying over the next two weeks, GDX, in my opinion, will be higher than where it is right now. And I'm thinking we're eating through uh, that uh, neckline. 
which is that top window indicator, which is GDX. And we're not going to go 50 right off the bat, but we may go, I don't know, uh, 37, 40 area, sure. then possibly pull back to the neckline, then maybe go up to 50 later. I don't know. But ultimately, we'll get to 50, if not even higher. But these indicators, this is like a two and a half, it's a 50 day indicator. So it's like two and a half months of, of, of analysis. So, um, this is, you know, what I'm trying to say, this is remaining strong. It's not backing away. Yeah, at all. and you can so, see it, folks. Uh, I, I think, mean, I, I think this, this is going to keep going here. You know so. what's so cool, Tim? You can see it. If you're watching Tiger TV, remember it's archived, folks, so you can put it on tonight if you're driving. Because you can see that it's taken out a long consolidation, too, right? Yeah. 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 I mean, that's pretty intense. Well, listen, Tim, it's yeah, always I, I a pleasure. Gain strength. Yeah, uh, huge. From here because it's gone sideways, and that's building energy for the next pop. Absolutely. Well, Tim, it's always a pleasure. You have a great one, a safe one. I uh, look forward to speaking to you on Tuesday, and I'm going to be here Tuesday, Tim. Have a great one, man. All right, good. Good. Love to have you. Absolutely. Right. Have a great one, folks.